Hey everyone, this channel has recently reached 400,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much. So to celebrate, Speedcube Shop is doing a giveaway. And since it's for 400,000 subscribers, there will be 400 winners. Yes, you heard that right. And does everyone get $1,000? Nope, everyone gets $10, but that's still pretty good. To enter the giveaway, just go to the link in the description and follow the instructions. And one thing you can do right away is subscribe to this channel. And if you win, you can use your $10 discount at Speedcube Shop at the same time as the discount code JPERM. Do not forget about that part. With that out of the way, let's get on to the Q&A. Ooh, that rhymed. If a bomb was about to drop and you had 10 seconds to grab any cubes you needed, what cubes would you grab? I hope anyone in this situation would be smart enough to not grab any cubes, but if I had to grab anything, it would probably be my backpack, which I take with me to a lot of places, and there's always a cube in there, just in case there's some emergency where I have to have a cube with me, so there you go. I'm always prepared. What do you think the breakthrough in cube hardware will be? Hey, if I knew, I'd be cashing in on that idea. But one thing I do think would be super cool, it wouldn't be WCA legal, but it would just be so cool, is if we could have an electronic correction system inside the cube. So let's say you're doing a turn, but the cube is misaligned a bit and you start to corner cut. Now what if instead of just corner cutting as well as the cube hardware could do, the electronics would just sense what you're doing and help you unturn the misaligned layer. Or if you do a turn and it only went like 70% as far as it should have went, the cube could just finish that turn for you. This is kind of just fixing inaccurate turning, which is what magnets were meant to do, but this would be a much more sophisticated version that would be more consistent at helping you do exactly what you want to do. Just imagine never having a lockup ever again. Next world record prediction, who and what time? I'm gonna say Max Park, no surprise there, but I'm gonna go a little crazy and say he gets 3.47 and ties the world record. Who is your first Rubik's Cube inspiration? As I mentioned in my cubing life stories, the first person that I really saw cubing and made me realize this is a thing people do was Yu Nakajima. Why is the Rubik's clock still a WCA event? Well, have you seen the logo? It's the World Clock Association. Why is your CS timer background so bland? Personally, I have a fire-breathing Leo Baromeo with lasers coming out of his eyes as my background. That actually sounds awesome. I'd love to see it. For some reason, I don't really decorate. My timers are always bland. I've never put a poster on my wall. It's just like stuff I don't do. I used to always think that stuff was dumb and a waste of time, but thinking about it more, it's kind of like a way to manipulate your emotions in a positive way, whether it's to motivate you or put you in a good mood or remind you of the type of person you want to be. And if you want to be a fire-breathing Cuban god who can shoot lasers out of his eyes, then I hope you achieve that. Most embarrassing moment at a competition. For a while, I couldn't really think of one, and I think it's because most of my competition life has been as an adult, so I don't do things that are as dumb. But a funny thing I can remember was the first time that I ever podiumed in a competition. For some reason, there was a table of prizes that I'd be allowed to choose something from, and I already knew how the prize scheme worked because I had studied that before the competition. I was like, I have to get one of these prizes. The two other people who got top three were Anthony Brooks and Kevin Hayes. Since I never got a podium, I didn't realize what we were going to do. We were supposed to stand in the front and take a picture. All I knew was this competition had amazing prizes and I was already standing at the prize table trying to pick out what I wanted and they were saying to me, hey, come over here, we're taking a picture, but I couldn't hear them because I was so focused on the table of prizes. A lot of people in the crowd had a good laugh about that. How many total cubes do you have? Not an estimate. Well, I don't know the exact number, so my guess is you'll have to find out during my cube collection video. How do you improve at F2L? Because I have tried and I have watched all your videos on it, but I still cannot improve at it. Maybe you have to practice more and watch videos less. Do you think there's a maximum amount of algorithms someone can memorize and actively use? The easy answer is yes, because there's a finite number of useful algorithms on any puzzle, like on 3x3 it would be 43 quintillion, and also your brain is finite so you can't fit an infinite amount of stuff in there, but what would the maximum amount look like? Of course, any number I give would be a little meaningless since I don't really know how I would have come up with it, but I think if you're trying to memorize as many algorithms as you can, the place to do it is fewest moves. So think about how you use an algorithm in 3x3, and you have to actively use it, not just know it, which means you have to be quite good at it. So once you see the case, you have to recognize exactly what to do, and then be able to do it very quickly with very quick transitions between every single turn. That takes a lot more proficiency in each algorithm than if you were to use it in fewest moves, where you have an entire hour to do your solve, it doesn't really matter how fast you come up with the algorithm or how fast you can do it. 
all you need to do is have some way of having that algorithm in your brain. Actually, no, it doesn't even have to be entirely in your brain. Let's say it's a 10 move algorithm and you only knew the first four moves. You could just keep trying things over and over until you find the last six, and then you have an hour to do that. Or you could have a long convoluted story that encodes a lot of algorithms inside it, and then be able to recite that story to yourself and kind of decode the algorithms that are in there and then be able to combine it with the previous trick, try it on your cube and see what the algorithm happens to be. If somebody really pushed the limits on this, I think you could reach over 1 million algorithms that you could actually use. That's a straight up wild guess. It could be much higher or lower than that, but I'm just trying to give you an idea of how crazy you could get with this. Non-cubing related, what programming languages would you recommend to learn? If it's for getting a job, then find out what the most tech savvy people are using right now and you can just go learn that. And it changes all the time, so I don't know. But if you're looking for one of the more useful languages that you can do a lot of things with just for yourself, then I recommend Python. And cubing related, how much do you practice a day? If I'm really feeling it, I can go for over five hours, but on most days, I practice less than one hour. Do you ever see yourself getting into Megaminx, Pyraminx, or Skube, and why? I don't see myself getting into Megaminx because I've tried it a lot since it's similar to 3x3, and it just feels like a big 3x3 that frustrates me because I can't find any pieces and I don't want to learn any algorithms for last layer. For Pyraminx, I've only really practiced it for like one day, but if I wanted anything like that, I'd probably just keep practicing 2x2. Two two. Of course, it turns differently, but it's a very similar sort of event where it only takes a couple of seconds and you can see everything in inspection. And then for Skube, probably not for the 2x2 two two reason, but I haven't tried it. Maybe I would really like it. Who knows? If a non-cuber wanted to be sub-10 in one year, do you think they would be able to do it? It's definitely possible to be sub-10 in a year if you consider the actual amount of information and hours of practice you would need. It's possible, but I think you have to be very talented. When you were trying to get sub-20, what was the hardest thing to accomplish? I think that was around the time I was working on turning slower to help me look ahead, but then when I turned slow and still couldn't find any pieces, I was like, why didn't I just turn fast? And it was a big struggle trying to figure out where exactly I should look and being able to deduce pieces without seeing all of the colors, although doing that at the sub-20 level may have been the wrong thing to do since that's quite advanced. This question is for your cube. Does Dylan threaten you or keep you in the basement? Well, I just asked my bulk power if he likes sitting in a shoebox, never getting to see the light of day, and he says he loves it. So that's it for this Q&A. There were a lot of good questions that I didn't have time to get to, but if you want your question featured, every once in a while when a Q&A is coming up soon, I make a YouTube community post where I ask you guys for questions for the next Q&A. I know unlike videos, YouTube doesn't always show people the community posts, and I don't know if clicking on the bell icon gets you notified of this, but you guys can let me know in the comments. So that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time.